I want to officially welcome all of you to our Pursue 2020 doTERRA Global Connection. This is our biggest gathering ever with tens of thousands of you joining us from all around the world. We've been working very hard to prepare meaningful and valuable messages and training. I suppose it's not possible to duplicate the electric-like energy that happens when 30,000 of us are gathered together in person. And like you, we are looking forward to the return of those days. In the meantime, as we gather online, I do not think any of you will be disappointed in what you're going to experience in the next couple of days. Now, we are in the middle of unprecedented and challenging times, unequal to nearly all of our memories. Sadly, we recognize that some of you have been directly impacted by this global virus. For all of those who have struggled, suffered loss, or are working to find a foothold today, please know that our thoughts and hopes are for many brighter moments ahead for you and for your families. You have our love and support. I'm sure there are many more of you who may be experiencing significant economic stress. Few, if any of us, has escaped the fear, anxiety, frustration, or even anger that seem to be causing so much upheaval and discord in our world today. One of our goals over the next couple of days is to help restore trust and hope, perhaps something we all could use a little more of. In 2008, doTERRA was in its infancy. The United States was entering the most severe recession it had ever experienced since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Confidence seemed to be at an all-time low. I imagine that many people likely looked at me and my partners with questioning, wondering eyes, wondering why we would even consider launching a business at that time. Truth is, at least in part, doTERRA was deeply affected by our early circumstances and is what it is today because of when and how we began. doTERRA was built on a foundation of sacrifice, scarcity of resources, and gratitude. For the first 13 months of our existence, none of the founders were paid no one received any medical benefits. We had to be very conservative and very careful with our very limited resources. We didn't know if and when the recession would end. There was no crystal ball to tell us that everything would work out in time. We just knew that we felt inspired to build something that could change the world and that would bless many lives. We knew it would take a lot of effort and we knew it would take time. We lived the principle of delayed gratification, hoping that our money would hold out, that rewards would come later, and that we could stay true to our mission and purpose and desires of our heart. Today, some of the challenges that we face feel very familiar, but today they are global in nature, extending far beyond the United States and impacting the entire world. When we look back and see the parallels between now and then, we appreciate that doTERRA was built for times like this. Our deep commitment to purity, quality, seems to matter even more than it ever did before. Now few, if any, could have predicted the extremes of our current climate, including us. But you can have confidence in doTERRA. We've continued to govern the company along the same principles that were so important to us in our beginning. We are grateful that we haven't needed to lay off a single employee during this crisis of the past six months. As a company, we have been rewarded with a team that has dug in, embraced a new and ever-changing paradigm, and has done truly amazing things. While we never expected a global pandemic, we have always planned carefully adding protections, building redundancy, preparing to weather any storm. We have a plan. In fact, we have a plan B and a plan C. And because of our beginnings, this has become part of our very nature. And today, we are free to pursue our mission, striving to pursue what's pure in everything that we do. Looking back, we're grateful for the difficult times and the galvanizing effects of sacrifice and the impact that our conservative approach to business has had on our ethos and our foundation. 
Today, doTERRA has become the gold standard in essential oils in the entire industry. And it's not just us saying so. We've taken our global botanical network and scientific and medical partnerships places that others simply cannot go or are not willing to follow. Purity and quality are the strengths of doTERRA. And as I said earlier, now it matters more than ever. We've had to really scramble the past six months, working hard to meet the increased demands for our products. Our amazing team has embraced these challenges. And as you will hear from some of them throughout the event, I'm sure that you'll agree that our capabilities are greater. Our supply is healthier and production is increasing. We are significantly stronger and better prepared to meet the future challenges. Some amazing achievements have happened this past year. Despite the challenges and constraints of a pandemic, we've managed to complete significant humanitarian projects around the world. One of these is the hospital in Somaliland serving over 500,000 people in one of the most remote and difficult regions of the world. Even the World Health Organization was stunned recently upon learning of the completion of this project. You'll be hearing more about this, as well as numerous other significant humanitarian projects around the globe, all made possible because of you, your generosity, and your passion. Nothing of significance ever happens without passion. Of late, some of our priorities have shifted closer to home. We are excited and committed to taking action and doing our part with the support of our new Inclusion and Diversity Committee, helping all of those who feel marginalized are perhaps less visible. Together we will learn and we hope to soften hearts, to open minds, to facilitate healing. We're working to build a more united, stronger doTERRA family. Perhaps some of you have found some silver linings during this pandemic experience. Perhaps you've taken a little more time to become reacquainted with your family members or friends. Perhaps you've used this time to refill your cup and to recharge your batteries. Hindsight is always 2020. For me, understanding the past helps me to appreciate and better understand the future. And the future is very bright. So what does the future look like? As I said, it helps to look back at the past. Almost exactly six years ago, Emily Wright and I were returning from the first trip to Somalia. We were gone for about two weeks on that trip. While we were gone, the entire company moved to this new, beautiful global campus. I remember going back to our old, now empty offices that weekend, where we had our humble beginnings. As I cleared out my office and boxed up my personal effects, I found myself completely alone in a completely empty building. As I walked around in the silence, observing the small 10-foot by 10-foot room where we had our very first product store, I found myself saying, what were we thinking? We were starting with nothing. It was a recession, so much fear and uncertainty. Yet we had hope, perhaps a fool's hope, but we locked arms with our friends who also had hope, who went on to become great leaders, influencing so many and doing so much good. Today feels like another beginning. I hope that you will look to the future with hope and join us in building your future, increasing your circle of influence and making a difference in this amazing world. Remember, when you bring the power of the many together and your teams to form the power of one, that's when the miracles begin to happen. That's when we begin to discover that each of us possesses far more potential for influence and good than we have ever imagined.